the early best ball championship on drafters. It's a hundred thousand dollar prize pool and twenty k to first. I think we got some of the skeleton keys to figure out how to take this one down. We're gonna pop through those guiding principles. I think that we can take advantage of in this contest. Answer a couple quick questions, and then we're gonna pop into a draft to see if we can put these to use tonight on drafters. Let's do it. Hello, hello. Uh, the chat is popping tonight. Good Lord. Welcome, Al, Shuby, Bernie, Jack, Clancy, Vapor, everybody. Hello, hello. GM, as uh, the, the people say, even though it's uh, 6 p.m. my time, GM. Um, I'm excited about, about this one. For the folks that are, are new to this, this is, of course... A live draft stream here on Spike Week, but quickly just want to run down kind of our our brief agenda. We'll of course chop it up just a, a little bit here with you guys in the chat. Thank you for hanging out with us. If you can really quickly hit that like, and if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. We'd really really appreciate it. It'll help us out a ton. Um, the Drafters Early NFL Best Ball Championship is a a tournament that I think honestly goes a little overlooked in this whole best ball space and our guy b kurt who was hanging out in the chat did a an awesome article that i want to run down it is a part of our nfl best ball almanac for 2024 so uh you're gonna get a little peek a little peek behind the curtains you can of course get access to the almanac in the description it is just 69.99 very nice price just 69.99 a one-time fee so if you Purchase the Almanac right now. You're covered for any best ball content for the NFL season that we do the rest of the way. From now, all the we're going to have you covered for in-season tournaments. Drafters has an in-season uh, best ball championship. Of course, Underdog does. DraftKings has weekly contests, so we're going to have rankings and everything even during the season. But, of course, Best Ball Mania, the Drafters best ball championship over the summer, which, of course, Spike Weekers. The Spike Weakers took down first and second in the Drafters Best Ball Championship. Nearly half a million dollars between the two uh, top scores, both a part of the Spike Week community. We are getting we low-key dominated on Drafters last year. And so I want to get into uh, some of the key takeaways specifically that Bernie had in this early tournament, I think, that we can take um, advantage of. I think the early stuff is... These contests are hard, right? We don't know where rookies are going to land. We don't know where uh, free agents are going to land. We don't. We don't. There's so much uncertainty that it's very difficult. So I think if we can find uh, some some small angles to take, that maybe you know people are generally mistakes they're making in these early contests, uh, we can get a, we can get a pretty big edge, especially over here on on drafters. Um, let me see here. Oh, this is funny. Shout out Johnny Meerkat. Johnny Meerkat in the chat from the Discord. Welcome, Johnny. We love you. Um, Quasi already on his 57th. Shout out to you. Evening. Evening. Um, All right. There's one question in the Discord. If this is your first time hanging out with us uh, for a live show, as I mentioned, we're going to answer some questions. If you ever have a question, the link to the Discord is in the description. It's 100% free. There's a live streams and media channel. Every single time we do one of these live shows, during this first, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, we will answer your questions. I will answer your questions that you put in there. There's a good one uh, relating to drafters in the hopper. But first, I want to go through uh, just some of the the high level bullet points. I think that we can put into practice here when we hop in this draft uh, in just a second. Uh, obviously, here it, with it's within uh, within our almanac. I go to data data and research in the almanac and scroll right here to the drafters early best ball championship review from 2023 obviously there's a whole bunch of stuff here uh and the breakdown from that tournament last year so it has gotten bigger last year it was 10,000 to first with 50,000 in prizes we are we're double uh a hundred thousand dollars 
in prizes with 20k to first place so uh shout out to drafters shout out to all of us all you sickos for playing these contests and allowing us to have a chance at a, uh, our share of a hundred thousand dollars in a drafters tournament in march uh Here's the winning lineup, though. Let's 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 run this down real quick. Here's the winning lineup for last year. I think uh, you're gonna probably laugh at this and be like, "This this is the team that finished first. Mind you, on drafters, for those unfamiliar, it is a cumulative scoring format. There are no playoffs, and you don't care about the teams that you draft against. You care about them in the draft, but the moment that draft is over, you are competing against all of the other teams in the tournament to score the most points in weeks one through week 17. No playoffs, no none of that, no, no advancing, none of that stuff. We're trying to score the most points. This was the team that won last year. CeeDee Lamb and Amon Ross St. Brown, which was kind of the pairing that you needed in just about any format at the one-two turn, right? So this person picked at the one-two turn. Uh, secured the CD Amon Ra pairing, which was which was huge. But then Ramondre Stevenson in the third round, not a particularly big hit. Mark Andrews, fourth round, not a particularly big hit. Terry McLaurin, same way. Mike Evans, okay, now we're getting into some hits. Mike Evans, Dak Prescott, James Cook. I think the price in the eighth round on James Cook was okay, but he wasn't a, a, a superstar um, if, for, for best ball purposes last year a little better on ppr sites but still not even not even that special um then we move on in the ninth round and talk about a not so great pick aj Dillon. aj Dillon in the ninth round got our first like real dud there is what i would say aj Dillon, pretty big dud uh jared goff all right jared goff nice khalil herbert fine zeke the funny thing about zeke is he actually ended up kind of fine at his eventual price you know august or september he actually ended up not horrible but in round 12 zeke ending up on the patriots was certainly not what uh, this person was paying for but it didn't matter right michael gallup all stone cold dud zero hayden hurst stone cold dud zero okay now we're coming back to some hits adam thielen and nico collins both definitely hits Nico, especially uh, Josh Kelly, stone cold zero Devonte Parker, stone cold zero. So we've now run down the list of Ramondre, meh, Mark Andrews, meh, Terry McLaurin, meh, AJ Dillon, awful Zeke, mostly awful, but just a, this is not a very good price. Michael Gallup, awful Hayden Hurst, awful Josh Kelly, awful Devonte Parker, awful. So we're approaching half of the roster. Ended up very bad, but to get to the last two picks, the 19th and 20th rounds, Jake Ferguson, huge smash as a tight end in the 19th round. And Kyron Williams, of course, um, you know, one of the biggest smashes in all of, of best ball last year, certainly in the 20th round. That is ultimately what set this team, you know, among a few different things. But what really set this team over the top was, I think, you see the big, big hits, especially at price, right? You got the right one, two turn, got the CD and Amon Ra pairing, uh, survived, you know, Ramondre, Andrews, McLaurin are like not very good, but it's not the worst thing ever, especially Andrews at tight end, but getting Jake Ferguson at the very end, getting Kyron Williams at the very end, getting Nico Collins, um, in the, in round 16, even Adam Thielen in round, in round 15, these hits and Mike Evans in round six, like all the hits are what make the team, especially I think I want to highlight in the early, in this early tournament, right? The hits are still going to be the most important thing, no matter what on drafters. Uh, you know, so even over the course of the summer, when we get to the main NFL best ball championship, you need huge hits, but you, you can't have quite this many duds in uh, the main draft summer, the main tournaments, but in the early contests, reason why we're looking at this and talking about it so much is I think it highlights that this is, you know, this is a peer to peer game. Our peers are not drafting great teams from a cumulative scoring format in February, March, April. And so we want to make sure that we're, we're focused on understanding that fact and really trying to target the, the, the winners, the, the, the league winners, if you will quickly, you will notice that this, this team, there's not a rookie to be found on here. That is actually where uh, the, to put my brain in a pretzel a little bit here because rookies were awesome last year. 
I mean, of course, Puka, but from the Gibbs and Bijan, uh, Tank Dell, Zay Flowers, right? There were so many rookies that were awesome last year, but this team actually didn't draft them. So uh, I, I'm I'm a little more uh, of a, of a, a rookie uh, proponent. I will almost assuredly be drafting some tonight when we hop into this draft. But I do think it's a great example of like there's so many different ways to skin a cat. You know what I mean? What does that mean, by the way? Can someone help me out? I I say that phrase, you know, ways to skin a cat. There's more than one way to skin a cat or or whatever. What, does anyone know where that comes from? And like, who's skinning cats? Where did that come from? Like, people were skinning cats and not only skinning cats, they were skinning them in multiple different ways. Are there really multiple ways to skin a cat? That seems, seems dark. Serial killer vibes. Um, but anyway, uh, quickly, I do want to hit a, co a couple of other key bullet points here that uh, uh, Bernie pointed out in, in this article. He says, how did the top 5% of finishing teams compare to the tournament as a whole? One thing that I want to take advantage of a little bit here is you see all pretty much all the top teams were drafting multiple tight ends, but... There's, there's not a lot of teams that didn't draft three plus tight ends. Very few teams were drafting only two tight ends. And you know which one did? The winning team. The winning team found uh, the, the right you know, pathway at the tight end position with Mark Andrews and Jake Ferguson and needed, right, with all those whiffs, with, uh, I, I, should, I should take that back, had Hayden Hurst. So, uh, disregard the fact that they only drafted uh, uh, <laughs> two tight ends, but they really kind of only did draft two tight ends, which is the point I was actually trying to make, being that Hayden Hurst, Stone Cold Zero, but found the Jake Ferguson and Mark Andrews. I kind of want to extrapolate that a little bit to, to maybe drafting a little bit more of the elite-ish tight ends, which is what I've been doing a lot on all sites, including underdog and drafters, but focusing in on two... Uh, uh, you know, more elite tight ends and sticking with two because as we saw on this team, the amount of whiffs you're going to have, like we just have to understand that we're going to whiff, especially on drafters in this early tournament. So knowing that I'm going to whiff, I want to be able to have more bullets to try to find, you know, those impact players like Kyron, like Nico Collins, like Adam Thielen. I want to be able to find those guys uh, and use my chips on those running backs and wide receivers. Yeah, I like, I like this. I like this. Uh, they drafted 2.10 tight ends. Dan says, if they only drafted two tight ends, they never would have had Ferguson there, right? I mean, or you could just draft Ferguson and not draft Hayden Hurst. Um, so yeah, possible. But also, you know, you can also end up finding Ferguson plus Andrews without, you know, they may not be that team. For sure. You're going to draft dead teams. I think that's the big thing is, I think people are so... Uh, get so worried at the onesie positions about drafting a team that fails because of the onesie positions that they forget that they're ending up more likely to draft a team that fails because of the running backs and wide receivers. And so it's always a delicate, a delicate balance. But again, this is a peer to peer game. That team was really not incredible. So what does that tell you? That tells you that our opponents are not drafting awesome teams. So we don't need to draft the nuts, uh, but I want to draft teams that have access to a level of ceiling that these other people don't because they're all drafting three quarterbacks and three tight ends, right? If they were all drafting two quarterbacks and two tight ends, we'd be talking about, hmm, maybe I should be taking a third quarterback and a third tight end. But all of our opponents draft it the same way. 36%. As you see on your screen and for the audio listeners, 36% of teams drafted into the early best ball championship on drafters last year, drafted three quarterbacks, six running backs, eight wide receivers, and three tight ends. And so I, I'm, I'm down to get away from that, right? And then you see uh, in the drafted column, scroll all the way down, you get to the, the crazy stuff, four tight ends, three quarterbacks and four tight ends that struggled, that were were – 2% of the top five, I want to lean into, you know, 2882 or those kinds of structures that no one is building. Actually just recorded uh, a fun zero RB uh, video pod with Ben Gretsch 
from stealing signals and ship chasing and and all of that and that was one thing we talked uh, a ton about or or a decent amount about where kind of extreme zero rb right waiting until after round seven to take your first running back is is viewed in such a way as like it can't win or it's weaker than other um structures because oh it you know look at the percentage of the top teams it's not very high in the percentage of the top teams but really only about two percent of teams wait until after round seven to take their first running back and so of course it's not going to have very many of the top teams if nobody's doing it but we know it can win and it's probably a lot higher than two percent chance it's probably a lot you know two eight eight two does not even show up here on your screen right two seven eight three does and that was drafted 5% of the time. But something like a 2882 is basically never drafted in this tournament. And those are the kind of structures I want to get uh, overweight on. Agree with Jack. Listen to Jack. Smart guy. Um, I wanted to hit a couple more of these bullet points. Bernie goes through some awesome stuff about uh, risers and fallers. And I just want to say it's a good example of how little we know. We know very little, uh, and and but the point of this being the risers were not great. We were very wrong about a lot of the guys who we thought should steam up the boards. Um, we were a little less so wrong about fallers, but we'll get to that in a second. But with the point point being, we're we're drafting off of ADP, and we're trying to build the best teams within this ADP framework. But I think. It's just so natural to assume that ADP knows a lot more than it actually does in these circumstances. And really the market is just, you know, it doesn't really know what it's doing. Like w the whole market is wrong about so much in February and March, right? Izzy Abanacanda was basically the steamiest player in all of drafts last year. And I don't, I'm not saying that that's like right, wrong or indifferent, but he rose 85 picks from the last round all the way up into the one fifties. And we were wrong. <laughs> he was nothing. Rashad Penny, nothing. Roshan Johnson, pretty close to nothing. Kendra Miller, basically nothing. Odell Beckham, all pretty darn close to nothing. And he rose 62 spots. Trevor Lawrence went from pick one eleven to pick 51. Didn't want Trevor Lawrence at pick 51. Samaj P Ryan rose 60 picks. Didn't want him. Sky Moore didn't want him. David Montgomery. Hey, we got a hit. I don't think I wanted him at pick 56, which is where he rose all the way up to. But uh, at least he was like a useful piece. Damian Harris whiff. So the market was wrong about all, all the risers. Doesn't mean we'll be right or wrong um, this season. But I think it's just a good indication of like sometimes like we think we know more than we do. And we think the market knows more than it does. Uh, fallers were, were you know somewhat similar. I think uh, Josh Downs falling was like probably made sense like when we think about the end results, but he's probably not the archetype of player maybe that should should be falling. The Joe Mixon one is pretty funny. Uh, start, you know, granted, he should not have been going at pick 30, 32, I don't think. But uh, Joe Mixon falls 50 spots and ends up being pretty decent. And Alvin Kamara falls 44 spots and I think was a, ended up being a pretty good pick at that price. Uh, market really liked... Anthony Richardson, but I think that closing ADP shows you that there's some juice to be squeezed out of the rookies, right? CJ Stroud uh, fell nine picks and Anthony Richardson went up 20 picks, but still just to pick 166. Um, let's see here. I like this one too. Uh, let, let, let's, let's close on this one. How does the ADP align with how often a player was drafted, right? That's a, a pretty normal question. We scroll down towards the end of you know, the player pool and you're like, okay, this guy has an ADP of 219. He has an ADP of 225. He has an ADP of 238. What does that mean? Bernie did a, a, an awesome, like kind of side-by-side comp here. Zach Evans going at two pick 201. So somewhere around pick 200, the guy is drafted in just about every single draft, somewhere around pick 200. But you get down into the 230s, which is hilariously where Sam Laporta was, the tight end you really wanted, who wasn't on the winning roster, but I think uh, even the person who won would have preferred to have Sam Laporta on, the, on that team. 
ADP of 231 drafted just 25% of the time. So once we get down to that very end, you're looking at guys drafted, you know, 20, 25% or less. So something to keep in mind when you get down to the end of the player pool and the end of ADP. Let's go ahead and hop in this draft. Let's see if we can fill where uh, oh. I want to make sure I get in here. Oh, no. You guys filled it. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, all right. I'm going to need... Uh, I'm going to need you guys to uh, uh, double tap this uh, draft here. I am in. Uh, it was 11. It was 11. Oh, that's MLB. It was 11 of 12 when I tried to get in. I spoke for about 12 seconds too long. Gosh dang it. I keep clicking MLB. All right. We need three more. This would be nice. Drafters filling two, two fast drafts here in uh, 45 seconds or something if we can fill this this puppy here. There we go. Look at that. You guys are crushing it. All right. Let's see what, what draft spot we get here. A. Ha. 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 The Influencer 101. I uh, shot a message over to the people at Drafters, and I said, I would really like to have Christian McCaffrey. Can you load me up on the 101? I do have to sit here and think about whether I take CMC. I, I do think I'm going to take him. If you know me, you know I've been strongly considering uh, moving away from, from Christian McCaffrey. I need to think this through, actually. I really, I really want to be overweight all of these wide receivers, but I don't think I want to take zero, zero McCaffrey. So I think, I think we'll stick to, I think we'll stick to, uh, to CMC. Nolan says I almost prefer CMC in this format over uh, somewhere like underdog or something. I think that that, yeah, I think that that is a fair, is a totally fair assessment because you don't have to worry so much about the. The running back has to make it through like part of the reason why we we are not in love with running backs um, or I shouldn't say not in love with running backs. Part of the reason why we uh, can lean away from spending our most important draft picks on running backs is because they have to make it through this gauntlet of a season uh, all the way to week 17. And week 17 is the, the week that really matters the most. That's when all of our money is won. And it can be very difficult, especially for someone like Christian McCaffrey, who's getting so much work and getting run into the ground and is getting older to make it all the way to week 17. Um, I kind of, I kind of am, am workshopping this idea that uh, I, I'm considering moving Christian McCaffrey down because I, I, I'm starting to get a, a somewhat of a sense with the Niners uh, making another run in the postseason that that's a lot of touches Christian McCaffrey has racked up over, over some time now. And I think the 49ers are in such a place that they're, they're clearly, clearly still going to be one of the best teams in the NFL do now Christian McCaffrey may not want this. Kyle Shanahan may not want this. I don't know, but to me, it seems fairly reasonable if not, some somewhat common sense to really back off some of this volume that Christian McCaffrey has, has been getting that they are one of the best rosters in the NFL. They are almost assuredly going to make the playoffs. I understand that there's home field and all those kind of things to consider. The lions are another tough team in the NFC, but the NFC generally speaking is pretty weak. So I don't know. I, I just am like, I, I kind of want to, uh, as our, our our good friend Rich Reeb, our Lord Reeves would say, I like to skate to where the puck is going. I don't want to skate to where the puck was. I want to skate to where the puck is going. And part of me is is really starting to wonder if the puck isn't going to Christian McCaffrey being more of a, you know, I, I'm not saying he's going to play 40% of the snaps, but like we got Eli Mitchell, we got Jordan Mason or or another new running back that they decide to bring in. It, 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 it's, it would be kind of logical to me to not be loading up Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel who can't stay healthy ever, ever, any season. He's constantly banged up. It just feels 
it feels like the right thing to do, if you will, to to uh, uh, take away some of this work from Christian McCaffrey. So it's something I'm really going to be thinking about and trying to finalize here. You know, particularly if they were to like draft another running back highly, I think it would really uh, be an indicator of some things that the 49ers want to do. But it's I'm considering moving Christian McCaffrey down. Is what I'm saying. It, I don't think I could put him behind Amon Ra. I love Amon Ra. And him versus Tyreek, I think, would be a pretty interesting uh, discussion point. But we have three wide receivers up there, C.D. Lamb, Jamar Chase, and Justin Jefferson, who are so young, who are so good at the game, who are on – in Chase and C.D.'s uh, case are on two of the best offenses in the NFL. Justin Jefferson, we'll see. If Kirk Cousins comes back, we know that he – maybe should be the 101 if Kirk Cousins comes back. I think the the I think how to evaluate, you know, who you're putting at the 101 is a lot more of a discussion point this year than it has been. I'm also just realizing I forgot to answer the question that was in the Discord. Uh we'll get to that once I make this once I make these two picks here at the 2-3 turn, I'll get to the question because it was a good one. Pretty normal room here, it seems. Shuby, Brees, Achan. All right, I'm on the clock at the 2.12, and I am going to take... I think I'm just going to take the falling rock. And Tank Dell. Just take my take take the best wide receivers available. I really like all the wide receivers that go there, but I think uh, I don't need to get mega fancy. I haven't done a ton of these drafts yet. You see number six. And so uh, I kind of want to get my exposure to all of these wide receivers. Rice, Tank, Pittman, who goes off the board right after me to Quasi. Um, I'm a little squeamish about Mike Evans, but Malik Neighbors, Jalen Waddell, and Mike Evans as well. Uh, DK Metcalf. Drake London, right? I want to get my exposure to all those guys, so I'm not trying to force any any form of unique combinations or do anything too too crazy. I'm a little little squeamish about Rashi Rice in general. Um, Tank Dell, I feel pretty confident that we know that he's real real good at the game and on an ascending offense. Uh, I'm not worried about the Chiefs' offense. I don't I don't I didn't mean to imply that, but Rashi Rice, I'm still a little bit curious about just precisely how good he is. If that makes sense, I know he's good, but like second round good. That's tricky. I think Nico goes, you know, early to mid second round compared to Tank. And I think there's questions. I think Nico is awesome. And I think what Nico did down the stretch maybe showed he's uh, a little bit better than Tank, but he did his his most damage without Tank down in the lineup. Um, and maybe, like I said, maybe that just continues, right? Amon Rod turned out his. He did his damage in his rookie. Now, this wasn't Nico's rookie season, but Amon Ra's rookie season, he did all his damage when TJ Hawkinson was gone and they had other injuries on the offense and they didn't have a lot else to go to, but he, he was just a superstar. He's just a superstar. And so um, it's a it's a little bit of an interesting case. I'm just trusting the breakout from Nico, but I also think there's a debate, a little bit of a debate between him and Tank. Whereas uh, with with Rice, I like this from Hacker. Shout out Hacker. Rashi Rice is a post-draft guy for me. If the Chiefs draft someone uh, like a rookie that I don't like, I'll take more Rashi. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's kind of what I was getting at before I uh, went off track. Meaning, I think, I don't think there's really much of anything that can happen to change like a Nico or a Tank Dell or a lot of these guys that go around here, Michael Pittman, right? Jalen Waddle. I don't think there's much that can change. Uh, Mike Evans, kind of our expectation of them, but there are things that could change our expectation of, of Rashi Rice. They draft a wide receiver. I think that'd be good for the offense, which could be good for Rice, but he was really needing to get home on mega volume last year. And if they draft somebody that takes away the volume, okay, maybe his efficiency goes up, but like, I don't want the chiefs wide receiver two <laughs> at, at, at pick 24 type of a thing. And he's already, you know, him and Kelsey. And if they draft another guy who ends up being better than rice, I think he, he has just the, the most kind of level of concern for me amongst these guys, I would say. Hmm. 
now I talked all the way through uh, the next break and then we'll, we'll hit the question. It's a good question. It's, it's generally just about drafters strategy. Um, curious uh, have you guys uh employed shuby what is going on here shuby's gotten bored our good friend resident best ball sicko nick shubat 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 is i assume it's shubat um uh, but we all know i'm not great at pr pronouncing things even though clearly i am uh, we just have some uncultured uh folks in the spike week discord but we don't need to get in into all that uh, took a weird turn uh some some seemingly mispronunciations have taken a weird turn uh for some folks but um yeah shuby says he's bored he started Brees, achan lamar and uh travis Etienne. i think it's fun uh, so there's something about this right where i do think it can be fun to experiment like be bored like go into a draft and be bored is actually kind of like a productive exercise for me sometimes where like the only way to ever find out if you like these things, if you want to draft more of these things is to do them. If you just draft like a robot and draft the same structural teams with all the same rules and do the same things every single time, how the hell are you ever going to know? Right. It's like trying food. It's like, how, how do you know if you like sushi, if you never tried it, how do you like, you know, uh, a, a certain kind of pizza or whatever. I guess pizza is probably a bad example. Who doesn't like any kind of pizza? But uh, anyway, we're back on the clock. Fourth round, Roma Dunze, rookie wide receiver. Before me here, that one is a little bit of a slam dunk for me personally. And then I am going to, I'm going to take Mark Andrews. Uh, I'm pretty into the discount that we got on Mark Andrews this year. I was... Super into Mark Andrews as high as the two three turn uh, in 2023. So if I'm getting fifth round Mark Andrews, I'm going to uh, scoop some of that up. There you go. This is a fair take, Al. This is a fair take. Doesn't like Chicago pizza. Doesn't like Chicago pizza. All right, I got to hit this question. I apologize. Let me pull up the Discord really quickly and hit tonight's question, which is. From House in Motion, shout out House in Motion, uh, a great member of the Discord. Probably been asked this a hundred times before. Don't worry about those guys. Ask your questions away. But are there certain player types you target more or less when considering the full PPR and cumulative format of drafters? So we'll start with the full PPR because I actually think that's the 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 answer that where it actually makes the most difference. And people, but people would be surprised about that full PPR is definitely where I'm being most intentional, where I think zero running back has a ton of power where certain running backs specifically are like really devalued, like really devalued. Like I was taking a ton. <laughs> God, it makes me sick to my stomach every time I think about this and have to say it out loud, but I was taking a ton of Rashad Penny and Damian Harris last year. Uh, I thought an underdog specifically that some of those kind of guys who maybe aren't going to catch passes were actually pretty undervalued. Uh, I took a lot of Miles Sanders the year before on the Eagles before he went to the Panthers, like probably not going to catch a bunch of passes. Um, the Ravens guys, you know, not going to catch a bunch of passes. I took a lot of them on underdog. On drafters, I really am trying to lean away lean away from from those guys there always becomes a price where they will make sense uh and i do think drafters the the drafters on drafters are pretty sharp and will give you a little bit of a discount for those guys sometimes but i really really want to steer away from the guys who in full ppr just have such limited outs gus edwards needs to score three touchdowns in a week to like matter on a on a full ppr site whereas you know, look what Brees did. In full PPR, Brees, Brees was catching double-digit passes in some weeks. That's just something that, like, he can score more points on recept, no yards, no touchdowns. He can score more points on receptions than these guys who don't catch passes will score at the running back position. And so that's the biggest one for me. It's probably pretty easy and pretty straightforward, but like those guys still get drafted and some of them get drafted fairly highly. And I really want to 
you know, be kind of leaning away from them. Uh, I don't mean to uh, 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 dunk on this person because he's also, this is not, he's not that kind of example, but Ken Walker, I just see as I'm staring at the board in front of me, goes in the fifth round. And uh, I, I like Ken Walker this year, actually, in drafts, but I, I'm going to be smart about how I handle Ken Walker on drafters because I, I don't project a lot of pass catching volume for him. If that makes, if that makes sense, I'm still going to draft him. I still like him, but I'm going to be real smart and try to get good prices on someone like Ken Walker to the point on, uh, uh, cumulative scoring. I actually think this is the thing that I have screwed up myself just a shit ton. And it's probably the biggest thing. I think I see people, the mistakes other people make is drafting players. You, you don't necessarily love because you think you're trying to cover, say, early season production, uh, often at the running back position, but also at the wide receiver position. Drafting players who are not tournament winning level players or, you know, you're, you're trying to scrape by with your eight points in week two from Samaj P. Ryan. Like those guys don't help you win usable weeks early in the season are not going to be the difference between you winning this tournament and you losing this tournament league winners. You need league winners. The team, especially in this early contest, right? We walk through it. Kyron, Jake Ferguson, Nico Collins, even Adam Thielen, right? So a league winner doesn't have to be uh, necessarily just the young guys or whatever, but I think we're trying to win this tournament drafting low ceiling praying for usable week players anywhere, but we can talk ourselves into it. Cause we can say, Oh, this team needs, you know, this team needs some early season running back production. And like, I don't ever want to be falling into that trap myself personally, man, the Troy Franklin price has gotten pretty steamy here. Huh? I'm still going to take, you know, I got to take my guy. This is where it gets interesting though. I love me some David and Joku. The quarterbacks look pretty good here. David Montgomery looks good here. Christian Watson looks so so here. I do actually like Ramondre here. What do the tight ends look like? Oh no. I'm going to keep taking wide receiver. I'm going to take Christian Watson. I want to. Um, when in doubt, this is a thing that I will probably say a ton of times over the course of this, well, not just the summer, but for the next six months, Jesus, while we're drafting for six more months. When I get to a spot where, like, I don't really have the stack set up, right? I mean, I drafted two rookie wide receivers, uh, a Chiefs wide receiver, and a Houston Texans wide receiver. So um, CJ Stroud is not available here. Patrick Mahomes is not available here. I have Mark Andrews, Lamar Jackson is not available here. Instead of, like, I like all those quarterbacks. But I think the worst thing you can do is sort of panic take a, a quarterback, especially an unstacked quarterback, or panic take a running back, you know, just because he's at the top of the ADP queue. When in doubt, I'm kind of taking in these rounds, especially in these rounds, it's kind of like money rounds where the best wide receiver players are pretty much always coming from, just going to default to that wide receiver. It gives me, it gives me some outs to another stack. Right, you see uh, Jordan Love here at pick at ADP ninety, so he'd have to like fall a tick, but that's okay. Uh, it, it gives me that possibility. Any you know any of these quarterbacks fall, that's going to be nice, be nice for me. Then I got Purdy available there. Plus, I know personally I'm going to like the running backs later better. So when I'm defaulting to a pick in kind of a wide open tier there, I do always use kind of the wide receiver as my backstop. I really like the tight ends right there too, as you see them fly off the board. Jake Ferguson, Kyle Pitts, David and Joku, and Evan Ingram—all guys I, I really like and maybe wish I would have taken. But uh, defaulting to wide receiver is like a if you want to like a best ball one hundred and one drafting when you're in these like top ten rounds, probably top eight or so rounds, you're in this like flat tier. You feel like I'm I'm okay at wide receiver. You're never as okay at wide receiver as you think that you are. And so adding another potentially star wide receiver is always a good fallback option. Clancy says Adam Thielen was a as good a pick as Rashi on drafters last year. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm not. You're definitely not getting any pushback pushback for me. Um, 
week one counts just as much as week 17 does. And Adam, Adam Thielen turned out to be a great pick on, on drafters. I'm willing to pay the tax on missing Adam Thielen rather than chasing that archetype of a player. But I understand, you know, that, that tax exists. I'm going to have guys like Adam Thielen dunk on me because I don't draft them, but I'm trying to, I would rather devote my resources to try to find Nico and Tank Dell and Puka and Zay Flowers and those kind of guys. And so um, you, you have to accept at, in any draft that you're, or, or any summer, any best ball draft cycle, and it doesn't have to be summer, right? MLB, NBA, whatever, NHL. You have to accept you're always going to be, it's a give and take. You're going to be sacrificing something to gain something else. And that's why I like to call it paying the tax. Like there is a tax. You're going to have to pay it because you can't cover every base. You're going to, the more you draft the Adam Thielens, the less chance it gives you to find Puka and Nico. And I personally would rather spend my resources trying to find Nico and I'm willing to pay the tax that is Adam Thielen in order to do so. uh, If that, if that makes sense. I think this is a fair assessment, though. Shuby says, uh, in hindsight, maybe 40% Mingo and zero Thielen was maybe. I think that's a, that's a reasonable assessment. See, this worked out. Jordan Love falls back to me. I'll take Jordan Love here. I do like David Montgomery, but I also really like Brian Robinson and I really like Jalen Warren. So this is going to be an interesting. Now let's look at tight end, though, really quickly. Okay, don't love, don't love that. Don't love wide receiver. So we're definitely going to go with our second running back here, which I do like. This in a hero running back build coming into this little pocket of the draft for my running backs. Man, I do think I'm just going to. I'm, I'm going to take B-Rob. You know what? This, this has got me th- rethinking my rankings, though. Um, I, I think I'm I think I'm going to be. I think I'm going to be moving B-Rob up a lot. <laughs> That's hilarious. Clancy watched it in real time happen. The B Rob snipe. The B Rob snipe. I, but I've been thinking about this one. I, I think B Rob's going to be a going to be moving up the old ranks for me. Getting pretty. It, it, I, I started to stumble on it because I like Chris Rodriguez so much, like in the last round or in the last couple of rounds. And I'm sitting there thinking, if I really like Chris Rodriguez. Because he's Brian Robinson's backup, I should probably like Brian Robinson around pick 100, especially the way that I draft. I'm excited about the team. I'm excited about the offense. Cliff Kingsbury is a dunce, but he creates running back fantasy production. And B-Rob's been pretty productive uh, when he's not giving away work to the dust ball Antonio Gibson. Yeah, I like I like this. Al, Al says he feel he does. He seems like... I, I, and he's a little younger, a little more exciting in that offense, I think. But in terms of like projectable volume, probably not a superstar level uh, running back. He's fine. So that sentiment, I definitely agree with in terms of classic dead dead zone back. But these classic dead zone backs are now going in round nine and round 10. And the value on that, like that's very different. The the calculus is so different, right? I, I, I don't want Brian Robinson in round four, round five. But Brian Robinson is my second running back on a CMC team. <laughs> Excuse me, with five wide receivers already and Mark Andrews. Now that's got a whole different, that's got a whole different, you know, impact to it. Like that works. That makes it move a little bit. But Brown five, Brian Robinson is a is a different scene. We took Quasi from him. Or we took Quasi from him. We took him from Quasi. Quasi was, was getting ready to take B Rob. Man, this we're team is team B Rob in here. Everybody loves B Rob. Clancy says, I've been hammering Ingram. Can we get some TD uh regression? He's an he's he's super, super interesting. Uh I don't know what the right answer is on uh on Ingram, to be totally honest with you. I'm still still pretty uh <laughs> pretty unimpressed with his general you know, skill set and, and profile. It's a lot of short stuff, but he's going to, he's going to get the ball and <laughs> they're going to throw it to him. Uh, I think he's better than I gave him credit for, you know, before for sure. 
with the Giants. I just think, man, he's it's a it's a tough zone, you know what I mean for for Evan Ingram. I see the I see the I see the perks. Yeah, this is a fair point from uh 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 Max Zier. Is that your name or is it Zach Meyer? I, I went to I went to school with a Zach Meyer. Uh and so this is this has me thrown a little bit here. Max Zier. Uh second stream in a row. I got thrown off here. Uh but this is definitely possible, right? He maybe he just doesn't get as many uh targets. That's also possible that he was out producing, uh, outperforming his his volume expectation and if the volume expectation falls down then uh it's not going to be very good for the old uh, uh production because the touchdowns ain't coming if there ain't volume. That's great. Too sharp. Benjamin says strong run game is the best way to help a rookie. Oh, God, we can, we can queue up all of these cliches for the rest of the summer as we draft uh, B Rob in every draft. Strong run game is the best way to help a rookie quarterback. What every coach preaches, and we'll try to implement. Totally agree. Let me a little B Rob with Drake May. Get Drake May in Washington. That sounds pretty fun to me. That sounds pretty fun. All right, I should probably. Ooh, Purdy, Purdy falling. I don't really want the Purdy CMC without any of the other guys, though. We are definitely in a spike week draft. There is not a wide receiver to be found here. Jesus Christ, guys. We're on pick 118, and the next wide receiver is Jahan Dotson, ADP pick 137, who I really don't want. Lord, I guess I'm taking running backs, huh? I actually might have to take Drake May. I'm not actually. Oh, let's see. Trust you guys. I definitely don't trust you guys. All right, let's look at running back. Mostert, Mixon, Swift, Chuba, Charbonnet, oof. Khalil Herbert. What's tight end looking like? Hawk. Oh. I got no. Nah, we figured it out. Schultz is the right. Schultz is the right click there. So that's good. We got our tight ends figured out. We add Schultz to a little Houston secondary stack. I like. I like that. I don't like these running backs, but I am gonna take Khalil Herbert because I do like him. I shouldn't say I don't like. Him. <laughs> Shuby says, damn you, take a running back. You know who you're talking to? You know who you're talking to? Bruh. Bruh. Oh, goodness gracious. Let's look at some teams. Let's look at some teams. Quasi in the Two spot starts CD, Ayuk, Pittman, James Cook, Anthony Richardson. Got the old Richardson Pittman stack. Uh, Bernie and I, if you uh, have purchased the Almanac uh, and the latest round table that Bernie and I recorded, uh, we spent some time talking about Anthony Richardson. Uh, that was a it was some pretty interesting conversation. Alvin Kamara. Uh, there's a guy who is better on this uh, drafters. Probably one of the best examples of a guy who's better on drafters, Alvin Alvin Kamara, um, better in full PPR, but I also think better on better on both. Kamara is probably one of the best examples of better on full PPR and better on cumulative scoring. Jake Ferguson and Dak, okay, okay. Anthony Richardson with Pittman, and then CD Dak, Jake Ferguson, Hollywood, Jonathan Brooks, Chuba. Damn, quasi. I know he crushes it over here, but definitely, definitely enjoying that team. Not really very excited that you got that team, and I don't. <sighs> Alas, we're in round eleven. Yeah, that I agree with that. Clancy says very true. I'd be shocked if Kamara scoring any points in week seventeen. I think it's, I mean. It's certainly possible he's scoring some points, right? He was scoring some points, I think, in week 17 this year. 
Uh, I think it was week 18 that he missed, but either way point, the point is still, still the same. Like we're, we're really getting old here on Alvin Kamara. The saints are, are really uh, not an exciting team truly to be, to be targeting. And then you got Kendra waiting in the wings where it's like first year was almost kind of a red shirt for Kendra given the injuries. And now another year of Kamara probably going to be moving on from Kamara's, you know, kind of as soon as they can, I need to double check his contract. I know that they're not moving on this year, but uh, you know, moving on, I, I want to say they have an out after 2024, but I'm not sure. Uh, but you know, Kendra, it seems like a passing of the guard type of a situation for Kendra would, would be like likely logical, whatever. But I, you know, I just sat there and explained why uh, I think it's logical that Christian McCaffrey gets less. Volume. <laughs> so, you know, who knows? Who knows? Uh, let's see here. Al says, thoughts on Janu signing with Miami. Does he hurt Waddle? Uh, no. I, I I haven't processed this one fully. I saw, I saw the news. I haven't processed this one fully. And on one hand, I obviously see the perks. I see, I see the fact that Janu is a, an appealing athlete, former producer at tight end when he was in Tennessee, produced uh, in Atlanta to the extent that we're still hating Kyle Pitts because of it. I think in in a role in a good offense, like is possible here, there's some real appeal. I'm going to be putting him in, let's say this, let's start here. I'm going to be putting him in the rankings for sure. Like for sure. Late round tight end is so bad. It, late round tight end is so bad that I really do want to be targeting guys like this. I think people are targeting Noah Fant and stuff, hoping for this. Uh, Noah Fant is like fetch. We just got to stop trying to make Noah Fant happen. Uh, Noah, Noah Fant just needs to land in a good spot. Well, he was in Denver and he didn't do it. And then he lands in Seattle. Oh, we, were, we finally got Noah Fant in a good spot and he doesn't do it in Seattle. And then he's a free agent and we say, Hello, Noah Fant just needs a good spot to finally start producing with that upside. And it's like, what, 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 what was the difference? What's going to be different this time? Uh, anyway. All right. Look at that. Drake May falls all the way back to us. This is how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. That's fun. Oh. And then I'm going to take Kendra. We just said we just waxed poetic about Kendra taking over from Alvin Kamara. How could we not take him on this team? Now we're set up for probably, I think this is probably 2792. Like I'm sticking to the two quarterbacks with Jordan Love and Drake May, as I outlined before. I don't think, I don't think it's wrong. I don't like, I, of course there is no right or wrong. It is not inherently wrong to draft three quarterbacks or draft three tight ends at all. It is of course viable. I have, I, w I have, and I will have teams with either three quarterbacks or three tight ends, and maybe both. It's I'm not going to dedicate zero percent of my portfolio to it. I clearly get it, right? But what I'm trying to do is draft in such ways that are underutilized by my opponents from a structural perspective. It's hard to get all of your players right, and then if I draft the same structure that everybody else is drafting, I got to beat right. This isn't the playoff format where of course the, the utilization of different structures matters, but it's a weird format where I'm never really playing against that many teams at once. Uh, you know, I'm playing against 11 other teams and then I'm playing against eight, 10, 12, 16, other 15, other teams, whatever in the you know, first couple rounds of the playoffs. And then I get to the final and it might be a, you know, several hundred or whatever in the, the final on an underdog or a DraftKings. But in, on drafters, I, I really do want to focus on those structures that we know can win. I just showed it to you. The winning lineup was the equivalent of a two-quarterback, two-tight end team. Yes, they took Hayden Hurst. He was a stone-cold zero. I, I understand, right? Maybe do they get Jake Ferguson if they don't? But the team had two tight ends for all intents and purposes. And once Mark Andrews got hurt, it really had one. And so... You know, obviously only had two quarterbacks. I we know that can win. 
but nobody drafts that way. It's like that's such an easy way to find a path to winning one of these tournaments is just taking structures that we know can win that the field, excuse me, the field just won't draft. And that's what I want to do. I want to be overweight those, those structures, like quite massively overweight. And then, um, you know, give myself as many bullets to hopefully find the Andrews Ferguson pairing with only two and the Dak and CJ Stroud pairing with only two or whatever. Let's see some good questions, comments. And uh, Randall says, I like Jake Bobo. Oh, I like this. I like Jake Bobo as a week 17 winner. The exposure is low and he's got big upside when easy with the win. When one of Lockett or Metcalf get hurt or JSN technically. Uh, it's interesting. That's interesting. I played Jake Bobo uh, once in DFS this year. One of the few things I got right. Jake Bobo touchdown week. That was very fun. That was a fun, that was a fun time. Uh, I don't even know if I won money that week, but I got to victory lap. Uh, a Jake Bobo touchdown when the people on the Rotor Grinder show didn't even know who the fuck Jake Bobo was. So that was nice. You know, it's always nice to lose money, but still get some props uh, from somebody. But uh, I think Bobo is a little too deep of a cut for me right now, but I think he's a guy that I'll keep in my back pocket. I'm, I'm interested. I, I'll think about him since you brought him up. I, I love thinking about crazy off the wall guys uh, like that, that nobody else is drafting. Um, especially that nobody else is drafting. And I'm, I'm intrigued by the Seattle offense. So an intriguing name, but I think particularly for this early contest, right? We're talking about all this early strategy and such. Uh, I want to be focusing in on some guys I think can just like be mega hits right away, right? We use these examples. I don't mean that there's even going to be a Puka of this year, but like the goal would be to find Puka. Like I would love to find a Puka. It's like week one, the dude is awesome. I, I, Jake Bobo is it's like never probably going to be awesome for fantasy anyway, and he needs an injury. Uh, those can those guys will be viable like over the summer, but I kind of want to avoid them in the early tournaments. All right. I do need to start taking wide receivers. Oh, God. Quentin Johnston is the top wide receiver here. That's a disaster. That is a stone cold disaster. Rashad Bateman. Oof. Tough scene. Let's look at the running backs, though. I should I should make sure I look at the Isaac Garendo uh, steam is getting pretty, pretty crazy, huh? The nice thing about this here, I got Malachi Corley. And I got Javon Baker, two two of actually my favorite uh, running backs in this rookie class, but particularly later. But uh, Javon Baker, and Malik Washington, I think are probably the two wide receivers I'm high, I'm most over the field on ADP wise. You psychopaths on drafters though have just ruined Malik Washington for everybody. Bernie just took Malik Washington at one fifty nine. The the drafters people are too good at this. There ain't no value to be had on these rookie wide receivers. That is a for show. Good Lord. <laughs> this is she's. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Let's, let's get a quick rundown of the team here hold on my apologies checking checking a little something out here all right we got the 101 because that's what happens when you stream drafts you just get the 101 we did take christian mccaffrey hey go back uh you know 30 minutes or so if you want to hear some conversation I, I, i'm I'm definitely going back and forth on what to do with Christian McCaffrey in drafts. We did take him here. Rashi Rice also talked about kind of going back and forth on, on Rashi Rice uh, and Tank Dell to start out this draft. Come back with Rome Adunze and Mark Andrews, Troy Franklin and Christian Watson. Then pair up our Christian Watson with Jordan Love. Take B-Rob, who I, 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 I'm, I'm very into B-Rob. And I talked a little bit about how I'm starting to get really excited about B-Rob. And I kind of in a weird way, figured out my B-Rob love through Chris Rodriguez, but 
the the chat the chat mob was chat mob very in on B Rob. I didn't realize I didn't, I didn't realize that we were all uh, big B Rob guys. He's he's not the typical type of player that we all all really love. Uh, but that was fun fun to hear. Take B Rob in round nine as as uh, the RB two on this team. Come back and take Dalton Schultz, which uh, I did I did see your comment, Shuby, and it was very good. Uh, Shuby said, who is selecting uh, in the middle of this draft, says, if you would have told me I would get tilted from missing out on Dalton Schultz two days ago, I would not believe you. Yeah, Schultz uh, returning to Houston, I think is a pretty big deal. Pretty big deal. I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm very excited for Schultz back and he's going to move up. Uh, maybe I'll do that tonight because uh, I need to uh, put Janu in the rankings. I don't even know if I finished my thought on Janu. It's been a long day, guys. Did I finish my thought on Janu? I'm putting. I'm going to put Janu in the back end of the rankings. Late round tight end is so bad, as I said, and I want to have some of those guys. Oh yeah, I got. I distracted myself with no <laughs> with fetch. I got started talking about fetch again, and. Um, derailed myself from talking about Noah Fant. Nonetheless, Jesus from Johnny Smith. Nonetheless, um I I'm I'm intrigued by Johnny. I'm concerned because they played uh oh my god, what is his name? What's the Dolphins tight end? The big big blocker dude that runs like a 5540. Five anyway, they 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 use their tight end or Last year, they used their tight end uh, as much more of a blocker and just like a movement guy, and not really a big piece of the passing game. Now, it's possible that was a that was a a personnel issue, right? They didn't have a tight end that they they trusted to do everything, and so you just default to your best your best option. He happens to be mostly a blocker, and so be it. But I have some concerns about whether that is like the plan of attack, you know, cause the tight end doesn't leave the field. They rotate guys around at wide receiver and in the backfield, but the, their tight end didn't leave the field. And so I just, I, I want to put him in there. I don't want to get like out over my skis chasing Johnny Smith, if that makes sense. But the upside is definitely there. Like, man, Johnny, in that offense, if he were to take over the predominant uh, route route share, you know, take over most of the routes, that would be, thank you, Jason. Durham Smythe, uh, uh, not a very forgettable name because it's very unique, but a very forgettable player. Uh, so you have to forgive me for forgetting about, about Durham Smythe. But uh, yeah, Hal says, any dude who's shot in the leg and comes back to play football the same year, that's our kind of guy. For anybody that doesn't remember, B-Rob got shot uh, crazy. It's hard to believe that that, it's still hard to believe that that happened, that that's real wild. Wild stuff. All right, back almost back on the clock in round 16. No, I have so much Yoshivas. I also have a lot of Izzy. Okay, hold on. I got four running backs. I think I want to. We're going to. Because I don't think there's. Oh. No, you know, I, I do like, I, I'm okay with Yoshi Boss on this team. You know, I think I've, I've once T was for sure back, um, I cooled a, a tick on Yoshi Boss, but the market I think has cooled on him as well. And is very, I, th I think most people are very certain they know exactly about who can and can't play in the slot and what the Bengals will or won't do with their wide receiver rotation. Um, you see teams like the Rams, like the, we classified Cooper Cup once upon a time as the slot receiver, and technically he is more of the slot receiver. They do lots of moving guys around, right? The Dolphins, technically Braxton Berrios was the slot receiver. They move guys around so much that like sometimes Waddle's in there and sometimes Tyreek is in there and they're doing motions. And I I, I think it is a coin flip between Yoshivas and Chuck Jones. Charlie Jones as to who is uh, the the you know day one starting third wide receiver 
for the Cincinnati Bengals, but I, I still like both, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be drafting both of them for sure, for sure. Um, let's see here. Do 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 do. Dogs heard something. Doggies heard something. Jawan Jennings, the folks, the folks. This is the second, second Jawan Jennings uh, mentioned this week. Rob, Rob mentioned Jawan Jennings. Al's mentioning Jawan Jennings. Uh, ben says uh, Anaya Smith is my favorite round twenty click. I, I can get, I can get around. I can get around to a nice Smith. I mean, I'm I'm pretty much willing to talk myself into just about any Ricky wide receiver with a pulse. And that's that's late. Anias is a really really interesting player in a just super duper bizarre way, right? He was a running back, uh, and and not just like like some the like guys come in to college as different positions, right? That happens, not a lot, but it happens sometimes. A reasonable enough rate, right? He played like so. Um, when I this, I'm getting old. This is like 10 years ago now. When I was coaching high school football, I coached wide receivers and defensive backs. Uh, our best player one one year, uh, big time recruit, went to Tennessee, uh, four star wide receiver, six six, like 230 pound, insane freak athlete. A uh, good basketball player too. Uh, shout out Matt Milton for anybody that wants to know. Um, but we didn't really have a quarterback that could effectively get him the ball, which is kind of batshit crazy to have a kid that's going to Tennessee to play wide receiver and you don't have anybody that can get him the ball. But we didn't. We didn't have a, anybody that could get him the ball. So what do we do? Go play quarterback, buddy. The team wasn't. The team wasn't that good. Went five and four. But you just put your best. You just give your best player the ball. So he played quarterback. Um, you know, you run a lot of wildcat type stuff and, uh, Anais was a running back in high school, goes to college and was a running back, was actually splitting time with Devin Achan. Uh, is it Devin or Devon Achan? I, I think I say it differently. I clearly we've learned about my pronunciation. Uh, I say it differently a lot of times, um, was, was getting real work as a running back for Texas A&M, but they had Achan. So they were like, we want to get our best players on the field. He moved to wide receiver while at Texas A&M. And I think I, I like, I don't know what to do with that exactly because he never really popped like to a major, major level, like as a producer, as a target earner, he was like a fine college wide receiver production wise and target earning wise and everything. They did have some other good wide receivers, Evan Stewart and such uh, at Texas A&M. But I, I just, I just don't know what to do with that, right? Because he's a he's a real kind of fun athlete. As a running back, you know, as a as a, he was a good college running back, pretty quick twitch, good in the open field, good with the ball in his hands, and like those are the kind of guys I tend to like to bet on. I just don't, I don't know what the NFL is going to do with them, and I don't know what to do with like a weird production profile. If that makes sense. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, I, I'm going to round out the wide receivers, and I, this is something I've been doing. That, um, I'm, I'm a little bit more comfortable with probably than the average person is. I'm taking both of those Bengals guys, I'm taking both of those Bengals guys, just kind of locking down that third wide receiver spot with the Bengals. And then uh, I should, I should have I queued first. Oh shit. Somebody took Emmanuel Wilson already. You sons of bitches. All right. I got to take my guy. Then I got to take Ronnie rivers. Emmanuel Wilson is the guy I'm trying to take in every goddamn draft, and I should have taken him. I should have known this. If I wasn't streaming, I would have actually done my – when I'm drafting not on stream, I recommend that you guys do this too. I would – I'd be uh, – like I love, especially in the early drafts, when I have a guy like Emmanuel Wilson who I really want to make a priority right now, like early in the draft I toss him in the queue. Uh, that has risks because you may auto him in the – sixth round or something like that. But I tried to, it's like kind of as soon as maybe makes sense. I get a guy like Emmanuel Wilson in the queue. He's a priority for me. I mentioned Chris Rodriguez. These guys are like huge, huge priorities for me right now. Cause I've been taking a lot of a a lot of rivers, a lot of the rookies 
back here. You know, I like a ton of these rookies. Um, I was not taking originally when these contests open, I was not taking Chris Rodriguez. I was not taking Emmanuel Wilson and Emmanuel Wilson specifically. Like I'm really trying to get a lot of before maybe everybody gets smart about his, uh, about his cost. And I, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to catch up because I think people are about to get smart on it. But I mean, like pick, he went pick two fourteen here in, in this draft. And I don't think like, that's definitely not too rich. We can chase him up a lot higher, like a lot higher. I mean, Eli Mitchell is going 165. Garendo is going 172, right? Will Shipley, Keaton Mitchell blew out his knee and he's going 184. We can take Emmanuel Wilson a lot higher than 214 as the seemingly much more likely RB2 for the Packers, which is like an awesome role. Contingent value if Aaron Jones goes down. Aaron Jones is not going to play every snap, not even close. Probably a split or like 60-40. And like that. That's hard to find in the in the later rounds of these drafts in March. <laughs> yeah, I like this. Shuby says Anias also uh, should be or could be a, a punt returner. He's a good punt returner. So he can get you active on game days, which is like a, a half the battle for like a mid to late round rookie wide receiver. Get a, Be active on game days. Find your way into some routes somehow. You know what I mean? Somebody goes down. You're one of the guys that'll be the next guy up because you're you're automatically active on game days. B. Kurt. Tank Bigsby, another guy we talked about on the round table. A quasi taking Cole Turner. Yes, unfortunately, I uh, uh, Clancy says quasi not scared off by Zach Gertz. Unfortunately, I think Cliff Kingsbury ruined our Cole Turner dreams, signing Zach Ertz. But who knows? You never know. I, I, I'm I, I'm really ready to see how that plays. The Washington tight end, I hope it's not Ertz, but the Washington tight end is probably something of value to us in fantasy. We just don't know who the hell it is right now, and we're, we were expecting someone not named Cole Turner to be the guy. We got the worst possible fucking name we ever could have got in Zach Ertz. but. We'll see. I'm gonna. I'm not clicking Zach Ertz. Okay, so let's be clear. But I'm also not gonna click Cole Turner. I do want to see how that plays out in camp. I do want to see. Shout out Clancy. Turned him on to, to E Man is what I'm gonna call him. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's his name, but I went to high school with it. Called the kid E Man, and his name was Emmanuel. Uh, so we'll we'll just call him E Man. How about that? Because Emmanuel Wilson is kind of that's a lot. We got to shorten that down to something. So E-man, E-man it is. Okay, I'm not going to screw it up this time. I need to get some get some guys in the queue. Dylan Johnson. I can't believe Zeke. That's so funny. Zeke. Cody Schrader. We know I like Cody Schrader. Evan Hall. We know I like Evan Hall. I should, I should pay a little more attention to who specifically is on this team, though. P. Ryan. How the mighty have fallen. One of the biggest risers in this contest in 2023. Undrafted in 2024. It's the curse of the old running back. Boy, running back's bad. Running back is really bad back here, guys. We've got fullbacks. Dylan Johnson. Cody. I got to get my Evan Hall up, I think. Got to get back to Evan Hall. He's in my rotation as well. If you watch these. You're just seeing the different running backs that are going to be total zeros that are in my rotation at the <laughs> at the at the end of drafts. Um, really quickly before I run down this team, a thanks for hanging out with us. Hit the like button uh, before we get out of here. Of course, hit the subscribe button. We really, 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 really would appreciate it. If you've not signed up on drafters, you want to hop in this this contest. You want to get ready for their best ball cycle over the summer. I mean, last year they gave away three hundred thousand dollars to first place in their their main tournament. Like I said, both of the top two finishers, shout out Dorito and Updog from the Spike Week community. The top two finishers for almost half a million dollars were from Spike Week. I think we're doing we're running pretty hot on drafters. So. Use promo code SPIKE or there is a link in the description and you can get a 100% deposit bonus on drafters up to $100, right? So you deposit $100, drafters is going to give you $100. There's $200. That's 
20 into this tournament or you know 20 or 10 or whatever over the summer they got more contests coming if you want to play baseball they got a mlb baseball tournament that's out there and it's i really enjoy the drafters format with full ppr 20 rounds and cumulative scoring use promo code spike like i said or the link in the description to get that bonus i like this eban or ew uh Jordan Love, or we're going to read it down from the quarterback to the bottom. We got the 101, Christian McCaffrey, Jordan Love, Drake May, Christian McCaffrey. Uh, apparently, Team Spike Week is uh, B-Rob, Brian Robinson, Khalil Herbert, Kendra Miller, Izzy Abanacanda, Ronnie Rivers, and Evan Hall. Rashi Rice, Tank Dell, Roma Dunze, Troy Franklin, Christian Watson, Malachi Corley, Javon Baker, Andre Yoshivas, and Charlie Jones. I do kind of like this wide receiver room. It's a, It's very unique i don't think i don't think a lot of people are drafting this particular wide receiver room but building in upside with a, a rome and franklin and christian watson honestly is a pretty big home run swing with a low floor but i, I like those kind of players malachi corley javon baker hitting a couple more high upside rookies and then trying to just lock down that Bengals wide receiver spot like it use we know that we're going to have whiffs in these tournaments. So, and in 20 rounds, when I know I'm going to have some whiffs, I don't mind locking down the Bengals wide receiver spot with two of my last couple, couple picks. And then we closed it out with Mark Andrews at tight end with Dalton Schultz, the newly re-signed Houston Texan tight end. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. We got, we'll definitely have some more drafters content coming in. If you want to get the NFL best ball almanac to read Bernie's article about drafter strategy or get our drafters rankings content everything the link to the almanac is in the description 69.99 for that for all of 2024 through the end of the season but that's going to do it for us tonight everybody have a wonderful night if i don't, if I don't see or talk to you have a wonderful weekend we'll see you guys later peace One. Those were some spicy takes. Want to stay up to date with all of the other spicy takes we're going to have over here at Spike Week? Why don't you press that subscribe button below? You turn notifications on, we draft a team, boom, you know about it. We have another spicy take, boom, you know about it. You can be there. You can draft with us. You want to stay up to date? That's how you do it. All right, we'll catch you later next time here at Spike Week. Spike Week.